Alright, yes, here we go. Week five. Welcome to 31 days of October 2016, week five. What? No, that I can't. There's no way I can go out like that. I, I gotta give them something special. I gotta go out with a bang, right? Yeah. Just, I, just hold on. All right, here we go. Ready? I think we're good this time. Oh, do I got uh, something on my face? I feel like I feel like there's something right here, or maybe here or here. Uh, yeah. Thirty-one days of October, week five. What's up guys this is it this is the last week 31 days of october 2016 we're closing it out i can't believe it's already here it went by so fast and obviously i wanted to to go out with a bang i guess you could say maybe put a little makeup on getting right down to business i have four guests for you this time this is unprecedented for my channel four guests and I am so excited about all four of these. This is just awesome. So I got two ladies, two gentlemen, two that were on uh, 31 days of October 2015 and then two new ones for this year. So I have the late reviews, I have Lady Hellbat, I got Will I Like It reviews and I also have Mariana from Impression Blend. So first we're going to start off with a great friend of mine. This is Tim from the late reviews. He is such a big part of this community. Everybody knows Tim. He contributes so much. He has collabed probably on more other channels than most channels. And he is a great musician. He's an awesome guitarist. I've actually hooked up with him a couple times and did some music covers, one for The Crow and one for Halloween. But yeah, I, it's just such an honor to have him back this year. And I'm so looking forward to seeing what he watched this week. So anyway, take it away, Tim. What's going on guys? It's Tim from The Late Reviews and uh, before I get into what I watched this past week, um, I just want to wish everyone a safe and happy Halloween um, and I also want to thank Lee for inviting me to be a part of this again. Um, I had a blast last year being a part of it um, and it's just an honor to be invited back again. Um, There's so many awesome people that have been on this this past month. I've had a lot of fun watching all the episodes um, and it's just a really fun thing to be a part of. Um, it is truly starting to become a tradition uh, and I can't can't wait till next year. And like many other blue tubers, I took it upon myself that during October I would try to watch 31 horror movies. But I don't have a lot of time during the week, sometimes I can't even watch a movie. Um, so instead I just tried doing 31 movies however I got there. So uh, that meant sometimes doubling up, tripling up, or even quadrupling up uh, on the weekends, which you know, I'm not complaining. And look, I like this time of the year as much as the next guy. I actually love Christmas more. After watching only scary movies with violence and jump cuts and gore, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I'm very, very excited to watch some wholesome stuff uh, <laughs> coming up soon. But before I go into what I watched this past week, I thought I'd at least touch um, on some of the highlights, some of the best, some of the worst um, of some of the movies that I watched leading up to this week. I watched Red Eye for the first time since seeing it in theaters, um, and it still holds up. It's a really fun and silly thriller, but definitely an underrated Wes Craven film. I watched The Descent for the first time since seeing it in theaters as well, um, and that movie is probably one of the most claustrophobic and terrifying films I've ever seen, um, and pretty much every single scene in that movie, no matter what scene you're watching, uh, is basically an oh hell no moment. And of course, I had to watch Scary Movie 2. Uh, that movie is still hilarious to me. Uh, I could watch that movie over and over and over again and still laugh as hard at every single joke. Um, and I also had a really good time watching some movies for the first time, uh, especially movies like Trick or Treat, Last Shift, Final Girl, and a big standout for me was Creep. That movie, uh, for a found footage movie, uh, is very, very effective, pretty creepy. No pun intended. I also watched Queen of the Damned for the first time, and I truly do not want to talk about that movie. So that brings us up to the final week in October. So on Monday, I watched Metallica's Through the Never. Aside from the first scene, this movie has no dialogue, um, and it still manages to be kind of creepy and pretty entertaining. 
Um, like I said, it's not a full-on horror movie, but it's definitely not a romantic comedy. Um, if you're a Metallica fan, you will definitely like this movie, um, and the ending will be sure to put a smile on your face. On Tuesday, I watched Freddy vs. Jason. I have to confess something to you guys. Um, outside of the first film um, for both Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, I haven't seen any of the other ones. I know I should probably get on that um, maybe next year. Uh, um, but while this movie is totally not perfect, this movie's pretty shitty, um, it's still super entertaining. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I keep watching this movie year after year. Um, it's just silly and it's self-aware and it wasn't trying to be super scary. It's more funny than anything. I mean, Freddy elbow drops Jason. Um, in fact, the, the last 30 minutes of this movie is so worth it um, and it sets itself up for a sequel so I don't know what they're waiting for. So on Wednesday I watched As Above So Below. Um, this is probably one of my favorite found footage movies. Um, definitely one of the better found footage movies I've seen in the past couple of years. Um, I love the fact that they focus more on the archaeology and exploration uh, aspect of this film instead of just jumping right into the paranormal. Um, this film is basically the found footage version of The Descent, but just not as good. The characters are actually likable, at least in my opinion. I know I've recommended this movie to a lot of people, and of the people that have seen it, uh, per my recommendation, they've hated it. Um, but I still really do stand by this film. I really love the idea of the catacombs. I think they executed this movie very well. Um, but hey, you might end up hating this movie, so can't blame me. So on Thursday I watched The Serpent and the Rainbow from this three pack which has Shocker on it, People Under the Stairs, and Serpent and the Rainbow. Um, I've seen People Under the Stairs and Shocker so Serpent and the Rainbow was the only one I hadn't seen and to be honest this movie didn't do it for me. Um, I can see what Wes Craven was going for and you can definitely tell that as a person he loves voodoo and is fascinated by it so it's cool to see him make a movie about something he's interested in because you can definitely tell he did the research. The movie is very comprehensive, it seems authentic, um, but it's just a slow burn um, and it makes me realize how far horror movies have come since this. Um, if anything, I mean, modern horror movies give you more scares earlier on um, and sometimes that's a good thing, other times it's a bad thing. For this one, it just kind of left me a little bit blah throughout the whole thing until the last 20-ish minutes, um, which were pretty good. It's definitely a special effects bonanza at the end, but this is definitely like a one-time watch for me. So on Friday, uh, I turned to Netflix to see what they had, and I ended up watching The Lazarus Effect. Um, I believe it came out a year or two years ago. Um, a lot of people hated this movie when it came out, and I can totally see why. Um, it is a shelved movie. It was filmed like a year or two before it actually got released um, and it totally shows. But I honestly had a good time with this movie. It's pretty entertaining. It's silly and stupid. It's definitely one of those things where if you don't know what to watch, you're not going to be totally let down if you don't go into this movie with high hopes. I think the idea is really fascinating of, of dying, going to hell, and being brought back to life and what the repercussions are of that. Um, so if anything, the idea is cool. Um, definitely a one-time watch for me, uh, but certainly not let down. And then on Saturday I watched The House's October Built, which is on Netflix as well. Um, if you've probably seen the thumbnail on it uh, and just scrolled right past it. It doesn't look very interesting. Um, it's a found footage movie, but the thumbnail does, totally does not do the movie justice. Um, I actually had a really good time with this one. If you like haunted houses, um, there's a really good chance that you'll like this. Um, it's kind of creepy, it's kind of realistic, which I appreciated. Um, I like found footage movies that kind of put you in situations that actually could happen because the point of view perspective is very personal and if you can creep me out and make me feel like I'm watching real footage then you've done your job um, and this movie definitely did that. And then on Sunday I watched Pan's Labyrinth for the first time. I know, I don't know why I haven't seen it until now, um, but to be honest I did not gush over this movie like everyone else did. I understand and see how great the storytelling is I understand the metaphors, I read about the film after I watched it, um, and it definitely gave me a better appreciation of this film, but I just was not pulled into it, I was not invested. Um, I do appreciate it though, I appreciate Del Toro's vision, his art direction, cinematography is always beautiful, but after seeing a bunch of his films now, um, he is hit or miss for me, um, and this is kind of a miss, but I, uh, you know, I appreciate it, I'll just never see it again. 
And lastly, that same night, um, I watched The Shining, um, which is probably one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and definitely in my top 20 or 30 of all time of just films in general. This movie is just a masterclass in filmmaking. I love Kubrick's attention to detail. I love his camera work. I love the tension he can build with just using character interactions and not jumping to terrifying imagery. I mean, if you really watch this movie, those famous scenes with the twins and the blood coming out of the elevator is so far and few between that real tension is in Jack and Wendy um, and just just how evil Jack really is down deep inside um, and how the hotel really brings that out of him. And aside from those things, probably one of the main things I love about this movie is the score. Um, there's a, a constant drone and uh, heartbeat sound that's constantly going throughout the movie and it's kind of like the bleeping noise in Aliens. At some point you forget it's there and it just becomes a character in the movie and the score in this film becomes a character. It's beautiful. So there you have it guys, um, that is what I watched this month and this past week. Um, I cannot wait to see what everyone else has watched as well. But let's be real, now that this month is over, I can finally get back to watching the movies I truly want to watch. Stuff like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and Elf, and Jingle All the Way, and Scrooged, and The Snowman, and It's a Wonderful Life. Thank you, Tim. Next up uh, is a new guest. This is Andrea from Lady Hellbat. Andrea is actually a published author. She works for the Rue Morgue. I'm really honored, this is awesome. And she has such an awesome channel and amazing tattoos, actually. So, looking forward to seeing what she watched. Take it away, Andrea. Hi guys, I am Lady Hellbat, and I am thrilled to be making a guest appearance on Drum Dum's channel for his 31 Days of Halloween series. He's had a lot of great guests on, and when a guy like Drum Dum's asks you to be on his channel, you don't say yes, you don't say no, you say fuck yes, when? And that's exactly what I did, which is why I'm recording right now, even though I am hungover as fuck. I just got back from Montreal where Rue Morgue Magazine had our 19th anniversary Halloween party. I dressed up like Heidi from Lords of Salem and I had a great time, but it was a long car drive back to Toronto. But here I am, because I want to tell you all about three awesome horror movies I watched this past week. <clears throat> Now the first film I want to talk about is a movie I'm sure you're all very familiar with. It's 1976's Brian De Palma classic, Carrie. I had an opportunity to check Carrie out at a rep cinema nearby recently. I was suddenly struck with the impression that everybody else in the cinema hadn't seen it before. Everybody else in the cinema were young, 20-somethings, and they were like, is this gonna be scary? Is this gonna have jump scares? Like, they seemed to have a basic familiarity with the plot and the story because, you know, it's been joked about and parodied a million times before. We all know that it's a story of a telekinetic girl who gets bullied and then gets blood dumped on her at the prom, right? Anyway, I'm watching the film and my awareness that everybody else was seeing it for the first time really flavored my viewing of it and it made me realize how dated the film is. It's such a perfect time capsule of its element and, and I feel really strongly about Carrie because as a female horror fan, I feel like this is the female horror fan story. I feel like we're lucky to have this. It's a story of a girl who was bullied and realizes this power from within, this womanly power that accompanies her menstrual cycle. Like, it's got very heavy, heady themes going on. And so, and we're also really lucky to have Carrie because if you're unfamiliar with Stephen King's history, it's his first ever story and he literally chucked it in the garbage can. He was like, the story sucks, it's not gonna go anywhere. And his wife was like, ah, actually, Stephen, you know, it's kind of good. Maybe we should shop it around a bit and look what the fuck happened. Look what we have to thank Stephen King for that has happened since. So these are all reasons why Carrie is a near and dear favorite of mine, but all this to say that when I was watching the screening, I found it very 70s dated. And when I think about the remake, which I did eventually see with the same friend that I went to see the original with last week, 
I found it updated the story in some ways that were very relevant, but it just wasn't enough. I thought it was really cool that the bullying scene incorporated an element of somebody uploading it to YouTube. I thought that was brilliant. However, when you get down to the grand finale, Susan Snell's pregnancy, which I guess is supposed to make us all feel better about this whole tragedy because Tommy gets to live on. Fuck that, it's stupid. Anyway, I love Carrie. It's a very special film, so if you would like to revisit it this Halloween season, please do and appreciate it for its little wonderful snapshot of the 70s that it is. Now, the next film I want to talk about having seen this past week, and the only new release on my list actually, is a film called Don't Breathe. Now, Don't Breathe was hotly anticipated by the horror scene. It's been reviewed by tons of YouTubers, reviewed very positively, in fact, including Drum Dums. He did a great review on it, so you should check that out. And my reading of the film is very similar to his in that I think it's among the best horror films to come out in 2016. It was directed by Fade Alvarez, and if that name sounds familiar to you, it's because he did the Evil Dead remake. Now, I've already said that I really enjoyed Don't Breathe, but it does have some shortfalls, and ironically, or maybe not so ironically, I feel like it shares a lot of the same pitfalls that the Evil Dead remake did, and that has to do with the setup. There's these characters, Rocky and Money, and they are so unlikable. And it actually kept me outside of this movie until the third act when things just kick into high gear and blew my mind. The tension was unbelievable. You put these unlikable characters in this horrible situation and at first you're not rooting for them at all, but when push comes to shove and all hell breaks loose, and let me tell you, hell breaks loose in this movie. Hell breaks loose all over this movie. Just when you think someone is safe, they're not. Just when you think you know what's gonna happen to someone, it doesn't. And it's just very relentless, the same way Evil Dead was relentless. But Evil Dead, as I mentioned before, I was really unimpressed with the setup. This whole, oh, I was a drug addict and you were never there for me and mom's all fucked up because of you and, me, 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 and all this interpersonal drama that didn't actually inform anything within the film. Horror movies don't need that, guys. We need to just fucking give her. And I kind of wish Don't Breathe skipped over the preamble and just got to the good stuff because honestly, all that drama and backstory in the beginning did nothing for me at all. But the movie rules, I really enjoyed it. Some really weird psychosexual politics toward the end. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Perfect Halloween viewing. Finally, the last and the most oddball movie that I saw this past week was a rumor cinema cob screening of I Drink Your Blood. Now this movie came out in 1970 and it is a quintessential grindhouse exploitation movie. The film owes a whole lot to the late Herschel Gordon Lewis, so it was really cool to see that on the big screen. This film was in production when the Manson family went on trial and the script of the film actually underwent a bunch of rewrites throughout the shooting process because that trial was going on. Now the movie is about a bunch of Satan worshippers who are going from small town to small town. When they go into this one small town, they fuck with the wrong family and a little boy who decides that he's had just about enough of their hijinks decides to get back at them by feeding them meat pies infused with a rabid dog's blood. So they get rabies and they spread rabies throughout this countryside and they're all just chasing each other, foaming at the mouth like and this film was actually so gory for its time that it received an X rating. Now, at the time, other movies received X ratings mostly because of nudity. This one got it because of gore. But the good news is that the original uncut X rated version is now available on Blu-ray for you to buy from Diabolique DVD, so you can pre-order it. You can check it out for Region 1 and see for yourself what the fuss is all about. I really enjoyed it. It's hilarious. It's a bit too funny and a bit too silly to be taken too seriously, but like I said, I can feel the influence of the Charles Manson trial. I can feel the influence of Herschel Gordon Lewis, who is no longer with us, and I could even see the seeds of what would become 70s horror. You have the nihilism, you've got the sound effects, you've got the tension. 
I, I felt shades of Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes in this film, so it's a really interesting one to check out. So once again, Drum Dums, thank you so much for having me on your channel. It's a great honor. I'm still pretty new to YouTube, so it's so wonderful to be included in the community like this and to be included in your series on pretty much the last week of October. I feel like a ringer. It's super awesome. If you'd like to see more of my videos, check me out at the Bat Cave. I'm sure Lee will include a link in the description box below. I do reviews, I do analyses, I've got footage of my Q&A with Bill Mosley up on my channel, and speaking of Halloween viewing, I've got a couple of movies that I'm planning to watch in a couple of days, and I don't know if you've seen these, but I'm pretty stoked to rewatch them and talk about them, so happy Halloween everyone, have a great time, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, now we have my partner in crime, Horror Needs a Hero, CP from Will I Like It Reviews. He was also uh, on week five last year. So looking forward to having him back. And CP and I, we always have a great time collabing with each other on these Horror Needs a Hero docs. We just have such a blast with them. And we've done quite a few already. And last month, we put out a brand new one after quite a hiatus. And CP really is an editing whiz. He comes up with the craziest, most offbeat content on his channel. And every time there's a new video by him, you never know what you're going to get. That's what I love about CP's channel. So anyway, take it away, CP. Hello, drum dummers. You'll have to excuse my presentation. As always, I want to thank Lee for having me on his channel. And of course, saving the best for last. If, if I do say so myself, uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, those of you who know me should know that that was a joke from the start. Uh, regardless, uh, th this uh, this year has been a bit odd for me, so this this Halloween has been a bit odd. I didn't watch as much as I'd like to. That's not saying I didn't watch anything, but I'd like to talk about the stuff that we've we've had in the meantime. Um, as far as horror is concerned, the the period since we last spoke, as far as Halloween's concerned, to now, there's been a lot of stuff. There's basically a horror slash thriller film for for anybody if 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 you have a particular taste they probably released a new film in the last 12 months for you and that's that's incredible uh while you know this time is spent checking out some stuff from from years decades past it's good to know that there's there's stuff out there right now and for you younger folks you know, that's probably what you reach for first and the best part is that, like, that's how the, the, the sickness, so to speak, that's how the crave starts. You, you, you watch something that you enjoy and you, you say, hmm, that was kind of neat. I'd like to see something else like that. And then you're hooked and then it's over. Summer of 2016 was, was quite a, an incredible year for horror. If you go back and look at, at some of the stuff that was released, and if you do comparisons, some of these no-name titles did really, really well. And if you, you plop them up against some, some heavy hitters of horror's past, they, they hang. It was a very successful year for horror, and that's that's just awesome. Of course, obviously check out the classics, but you know, there there are a bunch of gateway drugs, so to speak. As for what I watched, Lee had put up a post on the Killer Flicks page. There's a a free ad for you, Lee, on your own channel. Oh, and uh, of course, make sure and check out Lee's Facebook, Twitter, Letterboxd, MySpace, Mubi, LinkedIn, Clash of Kings, Instagram, WebMD, Netflix, Grinder, Gmail, Tinder, LetGo, Mozart's Ghost, and of course his YouTube page if you want to see more of him. I hope I got him all, Lee. So on Lee's Killer Flicks page on Facebook, he uh, put up a post about Wrong Turn, and it actually caused quite a bit of a kerfuffle. And in the midst of of all of that chaos, I decided to watch it again, and uh, I decided to review it. But yeah, uh, underrated film. Uh, kind of, it, it's kind of in this dark space. Uh, it, it's a film that's at the tail end of the the scream phase, and right before the torture porn, the the saw phase. So it's. It's kind of in no man's land there. There are a bunch of, of underrated horror films from, from the 2000s and I, I put this up there. I mean, I, I can't be alone because the film spawned, I don't know, it, are they even up to 10 yet? It, it's Last I checked, there were six of them. Uh, I also checked out an episode of Twilight Zone, the uh, Eye of the Beholder episode, which anytime I see somebody with, with a head wrap like that, I, I, I can't help but think of 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can we have that, like, lay under my voice? I don't have a mic, so it's probably better off we have something to disguise that. Yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, no. Do the, do the little... Can we put... Yeah, 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 okay. Can we drop the other one in there now, though? The... Yeah, all right, yeah. Like horses galloping. That, that's a nice little little underlaying track. I like that. Ever since watching the, the one video, who, who can see a, a person with a rap face and S O S help me. In addition to those two, I don't know if you want to count that Twilight Zone episode as a movie, but it's it's I also checked out Krampus again. Just, just so entertaining. So, I, 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 what what was done for trick or treat is done for Krampus here. It's not too over the top, so you could actually kind of watch it during the Christmas season and kind of cut down the monotony of it all. I mean, most people wouldn't want to watch Black Christmas, so th there's there's this. Um, other than that, uh, I'm presenting this video to Lee uh, earlier than Halloween, but on Halloween I'll be watching. Uh, you know, do I even have to tell you? Well, anyway, I'll be watching Age of Adeline for Halloween. Yeah. Well, that's it, guys. Uh, I want to apologize for the lack of pizzazz I have this season, but um, going through some personal stuff, uh, I promise by next year we'll be back on track. You can check me out at Will I Like It Reviews, or you can see me with the, the guy who runs this channel here in our Horror Needs a Hero series. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Have a happy Halloween. And don't get married. Okay, guys, my final guest. It is such an honor to have her, Mariana from Impression Blend. And just a little footnote, uh, my Killer Flicks Facebook group, I have to give her credit for the name Killer Flicks. She actually came to me with this idea, said, hey, we don't really have a horror group for our community. I took it and I ran with it, and it's just such a great uh, group. We're already over 500. We're going to hit 600 real soon. The group just keeps growing. We have so many awesome people in it. And every day we just have a blast just talking horror. But Mariana's channel is huge. It just keeps growing and growing and growing because she puts out great content, huge production value, very knowledgeable reviewer. So it is an honor to have her on my channel. Anyway, take it away, Mariana. Hey everyone, I'm Mariana from Impression Blend and thank you so much, Lee, for having me on your channel as part of your 31 Days of October series. Halloween is just around the corner, so I am extra excited today. October is such a fun month for any horror fan out there and I have been watching some of my favorite movies as well as trying to discover some new exciting horror films. One of the horror gems that I found this week was a Venezuelan film The House at the End of Time. Randomly found this on Netflix, never heard anyone talk about this, and it is really good and really atmospheric. It's about this woman who is convicted of a double murder and after 30 years in prison, she returns to the house she used to live in and we slowly find out what actually happened. As you can imagine, this house is pretty special and maybe had something to do with the murders. Really underrated film, I wish more people knew about it. Another film that I really, really enjoyed is actually a pretty recent release it's called under the shadow it's an Iranian horror film and I do believe it's currently playing in some theaters but I rented it on VOD it takes place in Iran in the 80s during the war and it revolves around a mother and a daughter as if the horrors of war were not enough it seems like the missile that hit their building actually brought some evil spirits along with it. Definitely a very well done and pretty scary film that could be watched straight up as a supernatural horror film or could be interpreted in a few different ways as a metaphor. Very interesting and definitely joining the impressive number of very good horror films of 2016. When it comes to revisiting favorites, I had to re-watch the Swedish masterpiece Let the Right One In. It is a wonderful and beautifully shot vampire story about two kids, Oscar and Eli, 
one of whom happens to be a vampire. It's a bit of a genre blend between a coming of age drama and a horror film. It's dark, the cinematography and the soundtrack are out of this world amazing. I could rave about this film for a really long time because it is one of my favorite films, not just in the horror genre, but just in general. And if you are looking for a great vampire film, you have to watch this one. Of course, another favorite of mine that cannot go unwatched on October 30th because it's Devil's Night is The Crow. Not exactly a horror film, but one of the most perfect films to watch around Halloween. It's an epic story of revenge. It's a very gothic feeling film with one of the most gothic deaths ever seen on screen. It's wonderful. I've seen it so many times and I love it more and more every time I watch it. And it's on Netflix, so you really have no excuse if you still haven't seen it. All right, that's it for the movies I wanted to talk about. Thank you so much once again, Lee, for having me on your awesome channel. I did watch a few more movies this week, but I wanted to spotlight the best ones. As for my Halloween movie plans, I'm going to be revisiting another one of my favorite it's one of the best films ever made, The Shining. It's been a while, so I'm pretty excited about that. All right, guys, here we go. This is it. This is what I watched this week. Uh, and I watched quite a few movies, actually. So let's get right into it. First off, I watched The House at the End of the Street with Jennifer Lawrence. And I haven't seen this one in quite a while, actually. It's one of those movies that was really panned by critics. And it's not great, but I don't think it's horrible either. It's kind of right there in the middle, but it's about this family, Jennifer Lawrence and her mother, Elizabeth Shue, they move into this house and the house next door, there was a murder. And so the guy living in the house, played by Max Therio, he is the character that you're unsure of. The town has cast him out uh, because of this murder. So I would definitely suggest this movie, even though the name sounds similar to Last House on the Left, I get those two mixed up actually. Next up, I did one of my favorite films ever, and that is The Descent. This movie is just so great. It impacted me so much. It's got an amazing score. It's got an all-female cast, kind of uh, the antithesis of the, the thing. Yeah, there's just so many different things going on in this movie. And to top it all off, they're stuck in this cave with these creatures. It's so bloody. But the core of the movie is the relationship between Sarah and Juno. It was just such an interesting story, it's so emotional. Uh, yeah, The Descent is fantastic. If you've never seen The Descent, please check it out. Okay, this next movie got a lot of controversy on Killer Flicks, and that is Wrong Turn. This is a movie that I really enjoyed the first time I saw it. Hadn't watched it in a while, and then I watched it this last week, and for some reason, and this does happen sometimes with me, it just didn't click with me. Certain things just really fell flat for me this time around. Uh, first off, the characters. I did not really care for a lot of the young characters. Eliza Dushku was great, but the rest of the cast, I just could not get into. And I know CP actually is a big fan of this movie. He recently reviewed it on his channel, so I highly recommend you go check out his review just to see a different side of the coin. But there was this really big discussion on Killer Flicks because I said I didn't like the movie, and then, and a lot of people in the comments actually did like this movie. But I encourage people to check for themselves if uh, they like a movie because a lot of people do like Wrong Turn. Don't go by my opinion, don't go by any reviewer's opinion. Because horror really does have a, quite a few different flavors to it. So what suits one person might not suit another. Next up, I did a movie I haven't seen. It's a Netflix movie. It is The Awakening with Rebecca Hall. And it's a good old fashioned ghost story with a really cool twist ending. Rebecca Hall is a debunker and she goes to this boarding school to disprove uh, this ghost that is, has been in this house for the past six, seven years. The story has so many twists and turns and I actually had a lot of fun with it, which I didn't expect. I thought it would be kind of boring and it, it does drag a bit, but then it really picks up in the last act and it really takes you to some crazy places in the third act. Next up, I did Psycho 4, The Beginning. I have never seen this movie before. I'm actually uh, working on a review for it because I've already done Psycho 1, 2, and 3. But this one was the one that I didn't like that much at all. I just didn't like that they went back and tried to tell a story that we already knew. You know, just to scratch the surface on my feelings on that. I don't want to go too deep into it, but yeah, Psycho 4. Next up, I watched one of my favorite 
uh, kind of horror comedies. It's a vampire comedy. It's Once Bitten starring Jim Carrey. And this is just such a fun movie. There's a lot of nostalgia that plays into this because I grew up with this movie. And I just have a blast every time I watch it. It's so fun and it's nice to mix it up with a good lighthearted horror comedy, you know, amidst all the dark horror that I've been watching throughout the month. And then next up I did The Purge election year. First time watching this one. Uh, to me, just to break down my feelings on the whole Purge thing, it's a great idea and I think the first movie actually tried to execute it the best way, making it claustrophobic, keeping it in the house, making it more of a home invasion film. Uh, and then the next two movies, they took it out of that and they turned it into really a dark action film. In the end, I really don't like any of the Purge movies. Do I hate watching them? No. Uh, I can still find some enjoyment or entertainment out of them, but it's not one that I want to go to and revisit every year. And then the last movie I watched was, you guessed it, The Crow. Every Devil's Night, October 30th, I watch The Crow. It's a tradition. It is one of my favorite movies ever. I love The Crow. And if you know my channel, you know I've talked about The Crow so much. I probably have talked about Halloween the most, but I've also talked about The Crow quite a few times as well. It's just a big part of my life. Rest in peace, Brandon Lee. Now, it is Halloween day. I wanna wish everybody a happy Halloween. I will probably throw in one more movie today. Uh, and just to let you guys know what I'm gonna do tonight, I'm actually gonna put on my Myers mask there. I'm gonna go out in my front yard where I got some tombstones and whatnot, and I'm gonna scare the crap out of some kids and some parents, hopefully. And I've been doing this for the past couple of years, and I always have a blast doing it. The parents actually come up, and they wanna take photos with me. It's just a really good time. Please post in the comments what you guys plan on doing uh, this Halloween. Looking forward to hearing. And if you find yourself watching this after Halloween, let me know what you did. So anyway, guys, that is it. We have wrapped up 31 days of October, week five. First off, I wanna thank uh, not just the four guests that I had in this video, but all the guests. I had so much help uh, this go around. Uh, every week I had guests. Everybody was just so willing to jump in. They were, they were like, Lee, what do you need? We're there for you. And I am so thankful for all the friends I have on YouTube. My channel would be nowhere without their support and without your support. And also, I'll post a link to the playlist for 31 Days of October 2016 so you can go back and watch all those videos and make sure you subscribe to all the people that jumped in and helped me out on this. Please do that for me, you won't regret it. They all have such great content, seriously. So anyway guys, that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, again, happy Halloween. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment on what you watched this week down below. And of course, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd, and drum them out.